right? So what we want to do now is we have um, multiple spheres. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's say that we want to control this value here, 10. And let's say that we also want to control the, um, the point with, some more, with a spacing input, right? So let's go to our um, create sphere object and zoom in. I want another variable as an input, which will be labeled spacing. And I also want a third input, if I click the little plus, this is going to be called, I'm going to call this num, N-U-M, that's how many spheres I want, right? So we're not using that right now. Um, I'll copy and paste my sphere radius, and this will become my spacing. And I also want a number, right, uh, like an integer, like 11, to tell me how many I should have. So I'm going to create a number slider and edit it by right-clicking. I want this to be between 1 sphere and 20, let's say, 40 spheres. And make sure that it's set to integers. Right? And this is going to be called num spheres. Okay, so even though I've plugged these last two sliders in, we're not actually going to see anything change because in the script I'm not using those variables called spacing and num yet. All right, so um, if I've got that set up, let's go ahead and um, open the object again. And instead of 0 to 10, this is going to be 0 comma num for i in range 0, num. And then we're going to go to my point, and we're going to say spacing times i, right? That will say that we have separate control for spacing. We have radius set up, and my point, my radius, and I think that that's it. So all we changed was this, and we added spacing times i for my, my point. If I hit OK. Okay, good challenge here. When I hit OK or I hit Test, you're going to get a red object. And here is where the out is very useful, right? It tells us there's a runtime error. The range method, integer and, integer and argument expected, got float. So what that means is it understood our input here, num, to be a float value or also called a number or a real, right? Uh, it had a decimal point. Now, that's just because we were specific with our slider, but not specific with our input. So sometimes we're, um, well, from now on, you should be, you should get into this habit of going to your input. There's something else that we need to de define besides its name, which would be to right-click and U M and say that the type hint should be set to integer, int. This is really important, right? Because sometimes the Python, um, GH Python object can assume what you want to do and um, it will figure it out. But other, a lot of times it can't because you need to be as specific as possible with your inputs for your script to execute the way you expect it. So we'll hit int and now you have 10 spheres, which is uh, num plus 1, right? And now we have control over the number, the spacing, and the sphere radius, right? So we can say I don't want them to overlap or I want them to overlap, and we can change how many we have and what their spacing is. Okay, are there any quick questions about looping or iteration uh, and how we've set this up here in our script before we move on?
All right, so there was one question about um, the convention of using the um, prefix for the naming of variables. If you're familiar with um, RhinoScript, this was a very heavily used convention for defining what the data type is. So you could say int num as opposed to just num, I-N-T-N-U-M. And that's, um, I think that, that if you wanted to do that, that's a matter of preference. I think it's, um, uh, the essential point here is that you have to be specific with your type assignment at the level of the ghpython object, which is the type hint, right? Um, what you name it is a more of a matter of preference. And I think that based on um, using Python just in Rhino, the fact that you don't, that you can call something whatever you want it to be and reassign it, what was a integer can become now a point. Um, it's a little bit more loose and can be uh, helpful for uh, beginners. Um, so if the concept is strong, then in terms of understanding what's happening with these variables and what they are, then I think you can call them whatever you want. But that would be a good way to indicate to someone else that this should be an integer. Okay. And then one other question had to do with um, what i is. And um, i is just the counter variable. And it's just like anything else, like you could call this x or Y or Z, but um, you know, X, Y, and Z are typically reserved for coordinates. UVW are surface coordinates. IJK are your looping uh, counters, and that's just a convention, but you can call that whatever you want. You can call it counter. All right, um, and there was also a question about breakpoints. So, uh, we can talk about breakpoints, and we can talk about converting integers and flo to floats and vice versa. Um, pi so for range import, these keywords here that are in dark blue are Python-specific syntax um, f uh, methods. So there's also some other ones. Um, so if you didn't want to assign a type to num in the object at the object level for the type hint, um, inside of Python, you could also say that you want to convert a value into an integer. So this could be another way to uh, get around the, uh, the type. It's just using um, the method int, or vice versa, there's float, right, which will take an integer and make it a float. And there's some more utilities um, that you can find if you start to type those uh, down here in the output window. All right, and then the other question was about breakpoints. So let's go ahead and uh, choose a breakpoint right before we create our sphere. If we hit test, it's going to say execution completed successfully. And as opposed to the, uh, the Rhino Python editor, it just seems like the breakpoint here is... Um, is not actually providing you with that additional information. I think that's just an in-development uh, operation. So if you wanted to um, do something like this, right, you could create a, a print option. You can't stop, you can't pause the script midway, but you could say um, that you wanted to print the uh, current my point. Right, and that would allow you to test what's happening at each step within the loop. Right, so that would be something you have to get around and uh, and or suggest uh, as some more functionality within this editor interface. Okay, um, so the last thing we want to do with this file before we go uh, further is to um, double click the or sorry, to instead of creating just a row of points, to actually create an array. Sorry, not of points, of spheres. Instead of just creating 
a row of spheres. We want to create an array of spheres, right? Um, so in order to do so, do so, all we have to do is add one more um, loop into our script. Um, and once, we, once we're comfortable with the for loop, um, we can just repeat that and um, use a different counter, and we're on our way, right? So if we go to for j, right, we've already used i, so let's use the next letter, j, in range, 0 to num, close parentheses, colon, all of this content here, this code needs to be tabbed one more level in, so now we're inside the j loop, and let's then use spacing times j for our y input on my point, right? So I've added one more loop. I've added a tab to all of these actions here. And then I've changed the my point y location to be spacing times my counter j. Hit OK. And now I have a matrix of spheres. All right. So I'll put that um, back up so you guys can see it, um, just to make one more modification so that we can get more uh, spheres. And if you wanted to, you could keep going with this and do a K loop so that you have a three-dimensional matrix of spheres. Okay. So um, I think we should move on uh, in the sake of, for the sake of time. But let's uh, take just one second to see if you guys have any last questions about loops or iteration. Okay, looks like we're ready to move on. So let's hit OK. And I'll save. And let's go back to the slideshow.